the first thing that a participant needs to do is register with the MIDAS system at challenge.kitware.com slash MIDAS. Click on the register action and enter your name and email information. Next, the user will log in. I'm going to log in here with the test user account I've created for this purpose. Clicking on My Folders shows the folders that Midas is associated with the user account for data storage. Clicking on Communities will take you to the list of communities associated with this Midas instance. There is a community associated with each challenge. The community is a set of shared data and users. Now I'll have my user join the community so that the user can participate in this challenge. The Info tab contains instructions and announcements associated with this challenge. Now that I've joined the community, there will be a new folder added to my folder section related to this challenge. Since I wish to participate in the leaderboard testing phase, I will upload my result set to the testing folder. Once my result set has been uploaded, I can go to the scoring submission wizard. I now select the challenge and the data set for the stage that I'm submitting and enter a submission scoreboard display name. This is the name that will appear under the actual challenge scoreboard. The entries in my results folder will be auto-validated. Here I've intentionally left one out to show that it is required by the challenge, but I can still get the remaining nine scored. After submitting my results, they will be queued for processing and the results will come in as they are ready. The scoring details link shows me information about this page. Clicking back on My Folders and the My Challenge Scores tab, I can see a list of all results that I've submitted. Clicking back on the run date will take me back to the scoring for this particular result set. Metrics for this challenge include the dice overlap coefficient, average distance between boundaries, the 95th percentile house door distance between boundaries, sensitivity, and specificity. More information about each of the metrics is available by clicking on the column header. If any of the calculations is an error, by clicking on the cell, you can see the output of the command line executable. In this case, I've intentionally included a file that does not have any image data to demonstrate debugging in this way. The command line output of valid results can also be examined. When a result set is finished being processed, an alert notification is emailed to the user. Also at this time, the average result values are included in the challenge scoreboard. We can see the challenge scoreboard by clicking on the particular community associated with the challenge and then clicking on the participant scoreboards tab. Information about the page is available by clicking on the scoreboard details link. We have all of the same metrics from the individual scoring results page with one metric per scored label. The row gets its name from the submission name that was entered at the time the results were submitted. The link will take us back to the detailed scoring page for this result submission and we can return to the challenge scoreboard through the breadcrumb. The column contains the average value for the user for that result set. This average value is used to calculate a ranking for this column value of the user against all of the other rows. The ranking for each column for a user is averaged, and this averaged ranking is then used to compute the overall ranking for a user. Any user that does not submit the complete set of cases for a testing set will have an asterisk next to their average ranking and ranking values.